Good morning students, my name is Ajese Pokop, a teacher of physics. Welcome to our today's lesson and on the topic X-rays. X-rays, as the name suggests, they are called X-rays because their names, the specific name of these rays were not known by the time they were being produced. To start with, as a student, you are supposed to know the following. One, you are supposed to explain the production of X-rays. You are supposed to state clearly the properties of X-rays. You are supposed to know the dangers of the same X-rays, uses of X-rays, and finally you are supposed to be able to solve problems involving the X-rays. To start with, we are going to look at the X-rays generally. As I just said, X-rays were discovered by a German by the name Rotgen in 1895. He was in the process of conducting some research on the cathode rays and in the process he realized that there were additional X-ray, additional rays of which he did have their names by that time and therefore he gave them the name X-rays. These rays are produced when the fast moving electrons are suddenly stopped by a barrier which is also known as matter or the target. These rays are produced in what we call the X-ray tube. As you can see on the board, this is the picture of the X-ray tube. At this point, the current is being stepped up at some high voltage because this tube, these rays can only be produced by the high voltages. So, voltage that has been stepped up here is the one that is being used to heat the cathode. Cathode is the point where these rays are being produced. And as you can see, it is curved, concave shaped. This is meant to focus the already produced electrons towards the target. The red color, as you can see, this one points at the elect ele electrons, of which in this case we call the electron beam. It's just a, a massive production of electrons which are channeled to the target. And once they hit the target, 99.5% of the electrons produced are being converted into heat energy, as you can see, which is being absorbed by the anode. The remaining 0.5% is the one that is used to produce the X-rays, which are channeled out of the tube through the window, as you can see here. The target is made up of tungsten. Tungsten is a material of very high boiling point. This enables the anode to absorb the large amount of heat being produced at the point of impact. The cooling of the anode is done by the circulation of the oil in and out of the anode and also the presence of the cooling fins, which are normally made up of copper. This is meant to dissipate or conduct the already produced heat away from the anode. Now, as you can see, the tube is covered by a thick material, mainly the lead. This material traps any astray X-rays that can be produced in the process. Then we have this uh, aerostat, which we also call variable resistor. The function of this is to control the amount of current that enters the cathode. Remember, we can increase the current or we can minimize the current depending on the amount of the electron beam that we want. Next, we have the production of the X-rays. These are the steps. The first step here involves the heating of the cathode. At this point, once the cathode is heated, electrons are produced by the process of thermionic emission. The electrons are then accelerated towards the anodes, which we call the target. The potential difference between the anode and the cathode is very high, always at 100 kilovolts. This 
potential difference is what accelerates the electrons to the target. Now the fast moving electrons are being stopped by the anodes, which is the target, and once stopped, kinetic energy of these electrons are being converted into heat energy and only 0.5, as I said before, are converted to X-rays. X-rays tube operates at a very high voltage. This is what enables the production of the electrons at the cathode. Now, as I said before, the cathode is concave in shape. This is meant to focus the electrons to the target. Cathode is, con is coated with oxides and these oxides are of low function. The purpose of that is to enable the emission of electrons from the surface of the heated cathode. The anode target has a high melting point. This is to withstand a lot of heat that is generated at the point of impact. Examples of these targets are the tungsten and molybdenum. Most of this energy of electrons, as I said also, is converted into heat, but 0.5% is the one that is being used to produce the X-rays. X-rays, X-ray tube, has undergone some evolution. As of now, we have a modern X-ray tube with just some minor modifications from the original one. In this X-ray tube, the anode, the anode is made up of a rotating material. It rotates, it's connected to the motor that rotates. As the electrons are being produced from the cathode, as you can see here, it hits the anode and any time it hits the anode, the anode rotates. Why is it rotating? It's supposed to change the point of impact and the purpose of changing the point of impact is to reduce the wear and tear at the anode. So these are the parts or features of the X-ray, the new X-ray team. As you can see, the anode is attached to the motor. Then this is the point whereby the voltage is being stepped up to some high value in order to produce the electrons at the cathode. Then the tube itself is surrounded by the lead metal or the lead sheet. The purpose of that still remains. It traps any astray X-ray rays that are being produced from the tube. X-rays are very, are very dangerous and therefore their production must be controlled. That's why there is a very small window left where it can only be escaped through that uh, window to the intended target. Now, the anode once again is inclined at 45 degrees. The purpose of that is to enable the channeling of the X-rays directly to the target or where it's supposed to be intended. Next, we have the properties of the X-rays. We have been able to summarize the properties as you can see on the board. One, these rays travel in straight lines at a speed of light. Two, they are dangerous. That means the moment they get exposed to the body, they can cause cancer, skin cancer, they can cause cell mutation and all that. The next property is that this rays penetrate some substances of soft tissues and at the same time it's absorbed, it can be absorbed by the dense materials such as the bones and the lead. Another property of this ray is that it affects the photographic films. The rays also ionize gases. Once the gases have been ionized, they now become conductors. That means they can conduct electric current at that state. Another property is that they cause photoelectric emission. Once they are directed to, to the metal, they can lead to ejection of electrons. So in that process, 
they cause what we call the photoelectric emission. Seven, X-rays cause fluorescence in certain substances. They are not deflected by magnetic or electric fields. That means these rays are charges. They are not charged or they are neutral. Nine, these rays <coughs> are refracted and polarized so that since they are waves. The tenth property is that these rays are electromagnetic waves of very short wavelengths. The speed of this wavelength is given by C is equal to lambda f, where C is the speed, lambda is the wavelength and of course f is the frequency. They also possess some image which is given by the E which stands for the energy is equal to HF. E is the energy, H is the Planck's constant and of course F is the frequency. Next, we have uh, X-ray, the types of X-rays, which are going to look at in our next lesson. For now, we have seen the production of the X-rays. We have seen the two tubes, the old tube, the modern tube, where these rays are being produced. And we have also looked at the several characteristics of these rays. Until next lesson, goodbye.